in today's video i am going to talk about how i made this nike commercial in blender I actually made this render for an animation challenge by the creative staff on his YouTube channel. Earlier I also participated for the PSP control challenge that he held on his YouTube channel. In today's video I am going to break down the process of how I made this Nike commercial animation. It's not going to be completely a in-depth tutorial but a sort of like a walkthrough. There are 10 shots in this animation. The length of the animation is 30 seconds as per the rules for the render challenge in this video i'm going to talk about all the steps that i took to create this animation like researching collecting information storyboarding pre-visualization and i'm going to go through all the 10 shots that were in the animation i'm going to add chapters to this youtube video so if you want to skip to a specific chapter you can but i would appreciate if you watch the whole video this is the file containing everything that was required for the animation also i started using blender in may 2022 so it's been like seven months so if i do make any mistakes forgive me because i am a beginner as well anything that requires a link will be given in the description but if i do forget please let me know in the comment section below with that being said let's start the video with any work that i start i do like to do my own research beforehand may it be animation or anything else in this case our subject was the nike air jordan 1 so what i did was visit the nike's official website and did a little bit of research as you can see from over here you can see all the designs that are available you can choose the color that you want to use in the video i will go over through how i choose this particular color in the end there are various varieties over here many designs too this also looks nice after selecting the shoe, I started to look for references. For that what you can do is, go to Pinterest, search for Nike animation or Nike 3D animation, you can find various content over here. See. This is actually too professional to make for me. While doing my research, I found about the studio Man vs Machine and I was just blown away by their work. They had previously worked on several Nike commercials and I was just amazed by seeing them. I did get a little demotivated after seeing all these fabulous ads. As you can see this ad over here. If you want to check the website out, I will leave a link in the description below. They have a lot of simulations going on. They were using Houdini for this. I did watch a lot of interviews of them. At this point, what I did was started taking notes in a Word document. Like the ideas that I did like, what I would like to replicate. Obviously with a little bit of twist of my own. So I started writing down these ideas in a Word document. Here as you can see. Here is the title of the animation, total shots which are 10, FPS 24 which was the rule for the animation and the duration was 30 seconds which was the rule as well. So these are some ideas. The cross data mines that it was kind of a hard effect for me to execute or implement in the animation. So they didn't make it through and the arrow means that this ideas made it through for the animation so as you can see over here color change while the object steps motion shoe cushioning yeah shoe wrapping by cloth yeah that was something i did not make it through abstract shots basketball court shot was the one that i had in mind too but i had to remove it because of the deadline and nike shoes bench to create the nike logo it looked good in my mind but I didn't look good in 3D. 
so i had to remove it the main reason to do research is because you don't want problem in your production phase which is the animation time because if you run into any problems right now you can just as i did you can just remove this ideas it won't cost you a time and money so this were the shots that i finalize and i arrange them in sequences writing down ideas are great but why not take it a step further so this is where i take screenshots and collect certain images that i think i would implement in the animation for this i use a software called pure ref as you can see this is the website it is actually a free software that you can use and many 3d artists use this software it is nothing but a reference board where you can copy and paste several images you can also go to google and type for the images you want head over to the images section and this is a reference board click on the image drag and drop it into your canvas over here it start easy i will make sure to link this in the description below so you can check out the software it's free to use but you can also donate to the developer if you want to this is the reference board that i created uh, as i said earlier i was going to do a basketball scene so this is all the references that i collected for it and a cushioning scene which i did not implement and the cloth simulation again which i did not implement so this is the shoe design this were the three shoes that i selected this was the initial one i actually went ahead and textured it according to this color palette but then i saw someone using a red shoe so i thought maybe i should switch colors so i went with a yellow and black shoe but then after visiting the nike's website the third day i saw this shoe and i thought this is it this is the shoe i want in my animation this is not the exactly shoe color i went with but this is the same color palette that i did use so after two variations i went with this one which turned out to be great and these are different colors of the same shoe because i wanted a shot where you can show different colors of the shoe and these are some close up details that i saved here now after all the research and collecting your information now it's time to move on to storyboarding now you might ask what is storyboarding so this is the google's definition of storyboarding in short basically it's like a script for your animation before you even get started like here i am using this script right now to even make this video a storyboarding can be as easy as like creating doodles like this which i made in a boring lecture while i was in college or like this highly professional and you can just call this an art but i tend to stay in the middle so this is what i'm going to do for my storyboarding to create the storyboard i'm using photoshop and this template provided by this youtube channel tip tube i hope that i'm pronouncing this right you can also watch his complete video on how to make a good script and storyboard you can visit this video where you can download the storyboard for which the link is in the description now you can draw and sketch and create a storyboard but i did take a easier road which was just going to google and search for the nike shoes and then i just dragged and dropped it into photoshop that's it that's all i did so this is what my storyboard ended looking like so as you can see i've added all the shots over here it's quite easy to understand here you have to add the title the page number the version the scene number and the shot number this will be the sketch or drawing but in my case as i said earlier i used photoshop for this here you would be writing what would be happening in that shot so here i have written light forming border around the product and rippling the product and here you will be adding the sound effects that you would like to use it's okay if you haven't decided it earlier you can just leave it blank so after that i created this old storyboard according to my ideas that i had after creating my storyboard i added it in my pure ref so it can be easier to view because pure ref can always stay on top of your software 
Several studios have their great professional workflows, but you don't have to do all that if you are just working on one. At least you can do is create a storyboard. It's always great to pre-visualize before actually working on the animation. Now let's talk about texturing. So the 3D model was already provided by the Creative Sap. All I had to do was download this blend file. So the model provided was not completely perfect, but that was the challenge you had to add your own design and details to it. So that's what I did. So this shoe was missing shoelaces at the upper part and a Nike Air logo over here, an Air Jordan logo over here, and it didn't have any stitches on it. So that's what I fixed in my model. I added some stitches, the logos and the shoelaces over here. Also this bump over here at the bottom part. I had to add this texture. As I said earlier, I went with this colors. The red and white was the my first color that I chose. I, I textured it according to this. But as I said that someone had already chose the red and white. So I went with this yellow and black instead. But then after that I saw this on Nike's official website. So I thought this would be in my animation. As you can see it's not completely similar. Like this bottom part I made it red. And this front part was supposed to be cream or yellow. But I kept it red. It's kind of similar but not completely similar. But I thought I like this look and this color palette look good for the animation. Now let's talk about the actual textures that I used for the shoe. For the whole shoe body all I did was as you can see over here all I did was added a noise texture if you want you can pause and screenshot this but that's all I did for the shoe so it looks like uh, leather as you can see if you zoom in a little bit you kind of start seeing this little bumps over here and that's the same texture I use for the whole body as you can see with just different color and for the shoelaces I downloaded a fabric material from the internet I will make sure to link it down in the description below and for the fabric or the inside I used the same material that I used for shoelaces and for the bottom part over here as you can see in this references that I saved earlier it has a bump over here for the bottom part and I wanted to recreate this so what I did was I downloaded this image from Nike's official website and I added it as a image texture for this for this part and then all I did was use the same image texture but set it to non-color and then added a bump node and then connect it to the normal make sure you connect it to the height what it does is creates an illusion that you have this model shoe over here but in reality it just showing you this depth effect using the bump node since uh, there was not going to be more focus on the bottom i did not thought about modeling this entire bottom and as you can see over here in the shoe model provided we didn't have any holes in the front part so what I did was just added a cylinder. I created a set of cylinders. Then all I did was use a boolean modifier over here and it created holes in this front part. That's all I did. And for the logos over here, as you can see it's present over here too. I downloaded the Air Jordan logo from the internet. Then I made it into a texture. If you want, you can pause the video and screenshot this node setup. As you can see, this is the Air Jordan logo and this is the noise texture for the bumps. And I did that same thing for this Nike logo over here. It's not like I knew all this from the very beginning. As I said, I'm a beginner myself. I had to watch some YouTube tutorials. At last, I was finished with the texturing part and I was really happy with this outcome. But it took a very long time for me to do the texturing part. So I had to move on to the animation part really soon as the deadline was approaching real quick. Before we get started, I would like you to know the basic settings that I use for this animation in Blender. I will just quickly walk through you those settings. Over here, I am using Cycles as my render engine, GPU compute and I am rendering here at 50 samples with denoising on because that's all my 1030 can handle. Make sure you turn on motion blur and I have 
enable transparency because I will be adding the background and compositing afterwards and in the color management section display device is set to srgb you transform to film it and the look is to high contrast so the colors pop a little bit and in the resolution i thought why not go with a cinematic aspect issue kind of so i went with 2048 pixels for the width and 1080 pixels in the height and the frame rate as said earlier was supposed to be 24 fps and the frame range you can set according to your shots. Make sure to set your output to a folder. I created this folder for this entire project. And as you can see, I have this frames folder over here. And this has all the shots. We will be exporting in, in a PNG image sequence. I earlier have exported using AXR, but I thought why not go with PNG instead this time. So these are the basic settings that I used in Blender for this animation. So let's move towards shot 1. As you can see, all I have did is added this shoe in this shot and a light. For this first shot, we want the light to shine over the edges of the shoe. So for that, make sure your world settings are like this. Make it complete black and the strength is set to 0. So the scene is completely dark over here and I have added a light in the scene. I have set a keyframe on the X axis location. Make sure it's completely away till the scene looks completely dark and then move the light towards opposite direction on the X axis and then add a keyframe to it. So it gives you this kind of effect when the light passes around the object this kind of dramatic effect which creates a suspense for the viewer kind of engages them here i'm using this viewport shading mode because i'm also recording using obs and as i said earlier i have a 1030 and i don't want my pc to explode but in cycles this is how it looks okay so for the second shot what i did was selected this whole collection and clicked on duplicate collection after that i got this whole collection now you have the same objects but make sure you change your camera name to shot 2. Do this for every shot that's what I would recommend and after that go to scene properties and make sure in the camera you have selected shot 2. If this icon is highlighted it means this is the active camera in the scene. A lot of times I have kept shot 1 as my camera and I have worked on shot 2 and kept wondering why does not it looks like it wants to be and that's what you are building wrong. So as you can see for this shot 2, I wanted a close up shot of this Air Jordan logo. So I wanted this close up shot of the Air Jordan logo. So for that what I did was I added an empty over here you can add this plane axis and then rename it to something you will remember what i did was i renamed it to track and then selected this camera go over to constraints and then add a track to constraint and then select in the target this empty that we created what it does is when you move this camera it will track the object in this case we are using the empty to track what I did was added a keyframe for location and moved it a little bit slightly and again added a location. This time I did use the graph editor. You can press A to select all the keyframes then press home. All I did was press this keyframe and this keyframe and then press S to scale it a little bit. Vertical means it's going fast and the horizontal means that it's going slow so as you can see over here it's kind of going slow now and then it goes fast and then it gets slow a little bit to connect the first shot and second shot i forgot to mention that i did add some lights over here and then what i did was as you can see the lights are over here which makes the scene complete dark as before and then i keyframed it so it moves over here so it's kind of like a fade in transition. You can also do it in compositing. It's it's the same effect. I kind of wasted in my time. Now let's move towards shot 3. And for shot 3, 
I wanted the Nike swoosh logos close up. I tried adding a backdrop over here but the thing was it did not lit up perfectly so I removed the background. It's the same trick as the shot 2 where you have the camera and an empty and it keeps moving. I have also added depth of field for this shot. Again add an empty and then rename it to something that you will remember. In my case I renamed it to focus and since we were tracking this Nike swoosh logo I positioned it over here and select on the camera go below to the depth of field section and then select the focus object as this empty focus so now this will be in focus and make sure to set the f-stop to something low if you have a close-up shot as in this case i had a close-up shot as you can see this is getting blurred around the edges and the focus is on the nike logo over here adding the top field improves the shot a lot but make sure you don't go crazy with it for this shot 4 i wanted a close-up of the material to show the leather texture that we created earlier so for this i thought a lot about how would i approach this and this is what i came up with so i have the camera position over here the same trick with the track 2 constraint this camera position over here below so it looks like someone is going to walk on you as you can see the camera goes over here and then it moves up pauses a little bit so as you can see this material over here we have a close-up shot of the material and this holes and then i keyframed it to move back like this it goes into the shoe and this is where i will add a fade out transition in compositing so it fades out and matches with the next shot now for the shot 5 i had to show the shoe deforming a little bit to make it look like it's flexible but i can't just make it directly pop into the scene so what i did was earlier in the shot 4 it was complete darkness so i started with complete darkness in this shot and i thought why not make the shoe fly up like this so that's what i did to control the shoe over here what i'm doing is i have added an empty cube you can add an empty cube over here scale it as you can see over here move it around the shoe and then select the shoe and then select the cube and press ctrl p and select object keep transform what this does is if you select the cube and move the cube it will also move the shoe it helps makes the animation easier so now all i have to do is animate this empty cube and it will animate this shoe as well so as i said earlier i wanted the shoe to fly up in the air and in the center over here so i have keyframed it to rotate it moves along in the z axis and here's a quick tip if you don't need this axis make sure to delete it because it would only confuse you in the graph editor you would have this number of keyframes lying around that you won't even name so make sure you only keep the relevant keyframes that you would be actually using in the animation so it's moving around at the z location and it's also rotating in y and z axis and to keep it in center what i did was click on your camera over to camera settings and in this viewport display you can see composition guides i keep the third and center check you can't view over here because it's completely black if i go over here in the solid mode you can see this composition guides it helps you frame the subject in the animation as you can see the shoe comes in completely in center to make this flexible and deform effect what i did was selected the shoe go over to modifiers add modifier and simple deform modifier and i have selected the twist and what i did was keyframed it as you can see it's at 55 angle it starts with zero angle so it looks normal and then it goes to 55 and it goes again to 0 then i have to flex it in the other direction so just add negative 55 
and then again zero so you get this kind of animation again to make your animation look smoother what i do is go to graph editor select this cube press a press home now if you have selected all this it will show every keyframe so let's just deselect this rotation and just click on location over here press a and then press again home now you can see this two keyframes what you can do is again as i said earlier you can scale it accordingly the vertical means it's going fast and the horizontal means that it's going slow so we do want a kind of a smooth effect as you can see it moves slowly over here it goes quickly up in the air and then slows down a little bit and as for the rotation this is exactly what i did it rotates quickly over here for this shot i wanted to show how lightweight the shoe is so for that i thought about using a feather my initial idea was this feather dropping on this front part of the shoe but since we already have this camera angle over here i thought about continuing the past shot with this shot so as you can see the camera is set like this from the past shot since i had already duplicated it from shot fifth we have all the objects and lights and then the camera moves slightly towards the shoe and then it moves backwards so i keyframe the camera to move towards the shoe and then it goes back from over here and then again the shoe is at the center of the frame but i want it to rotate so what i did was rotated the shoe and then it just fell down so we will continue with that with the next shot so as for the feather image what i did was i downloaded a feather image from the internet and then opened it in photoshop and then converted it into a texture after that i just made this kind of a mesh and then plugged in an image texture which was the texture we created in photoshop as you can see the node setup over here i wanted the feathers to match the color palette of our scene so this is what i did for white i obviously used the color ramp and for yellow i did the same but changed colors and same as well as for the red part you can take a screenshot if you want to and as for this scene over here the feathers just get into the scene so for that i created a particle system just add a new sphere and head over to particle systems and then click on add I experimented a lot with the particle system until i found the desired output that i wanted so i don't even know what i did to get there you can just view this particle system over here i have no idea how this all worked in the end because i have no idea with particle systems and all i had to watch countless tutorials in order to get this worked these are the settings of the particle system then as an input in the render section i choose the collection with the feathers that we created red white and yellow and you can randomize the rotation and scale for this as well i have turned off gravity for this so they start emitting from this uv sphere over here i had to time the particles to kill themselves on this particular keyframes it was a process of trial and error i keep trying until i found the right solution and this happened to work so i continued with this so now as you can see the shoe just rotates and move towards the bottom now since the shoe is going towards the bottom we have to show the shoe coming from the top so it's like falling from the bottom and in the next scene it will come from the top so now we are at our seventh shot if we click on the shoe over here i added the simple deform modifier again first let's talk about how it connects with the previous shot as i said earlier it drops in the previous shot so it should appear from above 
and lucky for us since we are showing the cushioning part it also gives you the momentum to bounce if you understand what i'm trying to say so as you can see it just falls down on this cylinder initially i had thought to add a floor over here but it won't match the entire scene that we are going with so i thought about adding a cylinder as the shoe falls down over here what i did to make this animation smooth is again in the graph editor you just tweak the keyframes a little bit and then you can see it just relaxes on the cylinder and then what i did was camera just punches in, in into that part over here since this is the main focus of this shot to show the cushioning of the shoe and here the simple deform modifier starts working i have keyframed it over here at zero right after the camera punches into the shoe i have set it to stretch earlier we had it on twist for the flexible shot but this time we are going to keep it on stretch it gets pressed and then it goes back to its normal shape so the problem with this was if i use the stretch option it would just stretch this whole part and i didn't want it so there is an option for origin over here uh remember we had the focus for depth of field the empty that we created i'm using the same one over here so over here so what it does is this is set as the origin point for this shoe so it only stretches over here as you can see it only stretches over at this part we don't have to worry about this because we have only the camera set to this part over here it's a close up shot so we don't have to worry about this other part of the shoe and after this what i wanted to do was since in the eighth shot we are going to show different layers of the shoe what i thought was what if i made this shoe bounce for the bouncing effect again i'm using the cube the empty cube we created to control the shoe and then i just rotated it and then it just bounces off towards the left now what this does is this gives us an option in the next shot and we will show an exploding view shot if you are going for the way i am going like kind of showing it's a single shot throughout the animation you can show that the shoe is coming from the right in the next shot you can connect it together i hope you guys understand what i'm trying to say so here as you can see it just moved towards the left and this is the eighth shot so as you can see in this shot what i did was since in the past shot it was coming from the left side it uh, sorry so in the past shot it was going towards the left side so in this shot it will come from the right side so as you can see over here so i had this idea of just instead of showing a normal exploded view shot like this over here like linearly i thought about why not show it like bloom like a flower kind of so it just starts over here and it's a shoe so it creates this shape over like this so in order to show that i had to cut out the shoe 3d model into various parts I will show you what i did over here see this is the effect we got there are one two three four and the shoe itself five five parts i went with so it this kind of creates like a flower blooming effect if you understand what i'm trying to say it also kind of looks pleasing and unique rather than just showing this exploding view shot over here in order to get this different parts what i did was if i select this shoe over here then i go into edit mode by pressing tab i can just select like this i had to manually select everything the parts that i wanted to be separated and after completing your selection just press p 
while being in the edit mode then click on selection what it does is as you can see over here this is a different part now and that's how I created several layers for this shoe in short number 8 and you might be wondering why I have a backdrop over here since I already said the background is going to be transparent and I will add a background later in compositing but this is only here for reference so I understand what it would look like in post I'm just going to hide it for now so if I go into cycles yeah this is what it would look like if we render then I will add the background in compositing later after the shoe like blooms like this flower I wanted it to combine together and then fall down but the problem was uh, if I didn't move this camera over here if I just kept it like this it just looked weird just falling down so what I did was I moved the camera from this perspective so now you get a closer view of the shoe falling down and this will be helpful to connect us in the next shot I keep saying that but uh, I wanted this kind of look like it's all shot in one single shot but it's not you kind of get the idea after watching this video I'm using different cameras for every shot but what I'm doing is using the motion of the object in first shot and then kind of replicating it or showing what would happen in the second shot that's how i'm creating a transition between these two shots i guess that's what a transition is supposed to be yeah and i forgot to tell that i'm using this cube over here because the shoe won't just float in there i mean this won't happen in real life too but i kind of wanted something below the shoe so it kind of falls over something so instead of a cylinder i went the, uh, with a cube i had actually worked on this shot before even before working on the shot sevens so i didn't work exactly in this sequence i kind of started with shot one shot two and shot three first then i kind of went with shot eight shot nine and then I went with shot 4, 5, 6 whichever felt easier for me to work with and as I would complete my shot 1 I would render it out and then I would put it into DaVinci Resolve so I can get the idea of shots coming together and how to make those transitions in my mind so I can work with them so in this shot, shot number 9 this was actually my favorite shot out of all these shots because it showed you this different colors available and it just looked magic to me so again I'm going to add this bank drop and again to connect the previous shot in this shot as the shoe was falling from the above in this direction exactly so it just comes down and then rotates I'm adding uh, the rotation to give it bit of a motion and then after this it kind of looked a little bit far what I did was keyframe the camera to punch in a little bit I didn't want the shoe to be just still while the colors were changing it kind of looked a little bit bland so what I did was select the cube and as you can see over here this is the auto key press on it before that make sure your end frame number is something more like 500 or something and then just press space bar press R twice and then just move it like this move it a little bit slightly with your mouse and as you can see over here it gives you this kind of a motion it didn't work over here because the keyframes overlapped with the previous keyframes that I had but from over here you can see how it is moving in motion now what the auto keyframe does is if you go over here in the object properties it adds a keyframe to everything you don't even require keyframes for scale just remove those and then check the rotation values as you can see over here 
this is like not moving at all mostly it's just one degree over here so you can remove this if you want to and the location as you can see it's not moving at all you can remove all these keyframes make sure to remove unnecessary keyframes all of the time just keep the relevant keyframes and try to keep it simple because in the graph editor you will just spend time editing those keyframes that are not even relevant to the scene or the animation and after that i had this whole number of keyframes what i did was from this keyframe to this keyframe i like the rotation so i went ahead i'm using the scroll wheel to zoom in on these keyframes press alt to move along and then from this keyframe to this keyframe i like the motion over here so what i did was select this then just press left click and then you can select this press delete now from this keyframe to this keyframe it will still has this motion over here you can still keep that that's exactly what i did so as you can see over here from this keyframe to this keyframe it's giving you this slight motion and as always you can fix all this in the graph editor you can make things move slow make things move fast it always spices up your animation okay so i forgot to mention what kind of lighting setup i am using for this so i'm using a three point lighting setup this is the key light this is the back light also known as rim light and this is the fill light i will turn them off individually we we'll start with the key light over here see how this key light is this kind of contributes toward being the main source of light in our scene and as you can see this shadows over here these are like really harsh shadows we don't want that and that's why we had a fill light over here so your product is now clearly visible if i go towards cycle engine it will give you a better output yeah as you can see over here this looks much better right we are removing this harsh shadows by using a fill light it's not giving a depth kind of effect if you want to separate your object from the background can kind of add a rim light see this edge lighting over here if i turn off the fill and key light you can see this edge lighting it gives you from the background so yeah that's basically my lighting setup it's not unique or anything and as for the power of the lights uh, i'm using 20000 watts on this key light and same for the fill light and same for the rim light so yeah that's what my setup looks like for lights and as for this color changing effect what i did was you click on the shoe over here and then you can duplicate it for how many colors you want to show the best thing about this is since we have already parented this to the cube this all shoes will copy the animation that we gave earlier to this cube so make sure to animate the cube before you duplicate the shoe and after that it was quite simple this is kind of uh, the texturing part it is the same node setup that i used for the original shoe all i did was change the colors and shoelaces according to this references that we collected earlier as you can see blue and white black and white pink and white red and black and other shoes that i also thought would look good for this and if you go to the object properties over here and then scroll down in visibility section over here you can see show in viewports and renders this is checked that means it will show in our viewport and renders so as you can see over here this is checked and i have added a keyframe to it it will disappear because i have disabled it in viewports and renders and then i have added keyframes to it now how can i do this with the next shoe for that go on the same keyframe when this shoe was visible to us and then make sure your blue and white shoe the next shoe is disabled over here and on the next frame it gets enabled 
so this is visible in the next frame and in the past frame it was not visible so it's basically like a match cut transition but since we are doing this in 3d we have the same object rotation location and we can match the camera angle and everything so to sum it up all i did was make the object visible and not visible when i wanted to and that's how the colors are changing basically as you can see over here if i play this animation you can see over here this gets enabled this gets disabled and that's basically how i change the color of the shoes just create duplicate shoes change their color and then make them appear and disappear according to your liking after this purple shoe i wanted it to go back to its previous original color so that's what i did it gets visible over here then i added a keyframe to this cube to move down towards our final shot okay so this is our final shot of the animation by far this was the hardest shot that i have made in this complete animation because even if it was a one shot it had three motions like the shoe should be walking and then a skateboard would appear from the right and the shoe would do a kickflip with it and then it would do a moonwalk while revealing the nike logo i don't know what i was thinking in my mind when i thought about this shot but it was the hardest but totally worth it shot in the end and for this to work i had to learn rigging so basically if you want to bend the shoe like this what i had to do was add a rig so it bends the shoe like this as you can see over here the shoe is bending using this rig that i created now i didn't know how to rig a shoe or i have done anything like this before so i watched the youtube tutorial like everyone else and i found out this tutorial to be very helpful and that's exactly what the method i used for my animation and this tutorial was by clever poly thank you very much for that video without that my shot would have never been possible he actually has a playlist on making the shoe 3d product animation which you can check over here but the one that i found useful for my shot was this the rigging tutorial i will make sure to link this video and the entire playlist in the description below so you can watch that video to understand how i made that rig for the shoe it's the same process that i used so i made this entire scene with moonwalk with skateboarding and everything and then i rendered it overnight and after exporting and viewing it in davinci resolve it's up and you know why because it had very less keyframes the entire animation was compressed into 80 frames and with 24 fps and the reason i went with 80 frames was because i didn't had any space remaining i only had like a 2 second or 3 second time remaining in the complete 30 second entire animation because all the 9 shots that we previously created was consuming almost 27 seconds so i only had 3 seconds remaining and i also had to show the nike logo at the end so i had to keep like one or two seconds for that i re-rendered it all over again so as you can see i made a duplicate of the folder named it as moonwalk over here and then in this you can see i made it into a 186 frames of animation so earlier it was at 80 and this is double the size if you get into this kind of situation anytime to increase the time of the frames what you can do is just press a while being in the timeline make sure your cursor is over at the first frame and then just press s this way you can scale all the keyframes i have increased the frames from 186 to 468 even if it is slow over here what you can do is increase the speed in any editing software later so you have that flexibility to speed the entire shot in the editing later on but if you have like less number of frames like 80 in my case earlier you can't make it look slow it just looks weird and that 
2 with 24 frames per second if we had something like 120 fps or 60 frames per second it would have made sense to slow the clip down but with 24 frames per second if you try to make it more slow down like 2x it would start playing in 12 frames per second and it would just not look good at all so if you kind of get yourself into this kind of issue anytime just scale the keyframes and re-render all it again to connect the shot from the previous shot like with all shots that i did in the previous shot the shoe was falling from above so in this shot we will connect that as you can see the shoe is falling down and since i only had one 3d model what you can do is click on the shoe add a modifier and then go to mirror modifier that way you can mirror the 3d model so that way you have this right shoe too we are using the same trick for this over here if i click on the shoe the previous trick that we used was making the object appear and disappear that's exactly what i'm doing over here so the object does not appear till the first left shoe falls down on the floor and then I keyframed it to make it go visible in viewport and render. So this is already hiding behind our this shoe so till then it's not visible. After it falls down it gets visible. Now we have two shoes and as for the lighting setting it's the same three point lighting but this time I added an extra light because the shoes were not getting well lit in this environment and as for the floor it is just a cube that is just scaled on the x axis as you can see and then you can add animations to your rig using the rig that we created but you can't just select your object and then add keyframes to this because the rig is controlling your shoe so we have to add keyframes to the rig itself to do that go over to pose mode make sure you are in the pose mode because otherwise it won't work in object mode and then you can simply rotate it like this and you can then rotate it like this and then keyframe it by pressing i rotation inserting a keyframe and that's what i did i keyframed it to make it look like the shoes are walking so for this what i did was I watched several videos on how people walk so I watched many low angle shots of people walking so I kind of could replicate the animation and then I walked myself for a while and I saw how my legs were moving while walking I know it sounds all weird but that's what you do for animation you take references from real life and again for this skateboard shot now I had a problem for the skateboard like from where it would appear in this frame right so what I thought was why not make it appear from the right side while the shoes jumped to get on the skateboard initially I thought about the skateboard would be over here on the left side and the shoes would run to get on the skateboard like uh, normally skateboarders do like they run and get on the skateboard but then I had to drop that idea because it would require more animation so this is what I went with so the skateboard comes from the left the shoes jump again the same thing what I did was again, again the same thing what I did was I animated the rig you go frame by frame and then animate it and as for the kickflip I have never done skateboarding in my life so I had to watch several videos on how to do a kickflip it was quite amazing to watch then what I learned was this left foot over here kicks the skateboard so it kind of goes diagonally like this it goes in the air then your right shoe pushes this part of the skateboard which makes the skateboard rotate and then turn and then land and before you land your legs are on the skateboard too so i had to watch those kickflip tutorials in slow motion and after that i recreated this in animation so to make this easier what i did was animated the 
skateboard first as you can see over here it comes into the shot and then i rotated it so after that i animated the shoes getting on the keyboard and moving up in the air i'm using the same trick over here like we did with the shoe i'm using a empty cube to control this skateboard over here after this the shoes just jump in the air and the skateboard goes to the left out of the frame and while the shoes are coming down since i had to show the skateboard and kick flip i had to keep the camera a lot far so kind of making it like a wide shot and after that while the shoes are coming now the camera just punches in over here and as you can see over here in my previous shots i had the shoe centered align in the frame but as for this shot as you can see this right shoe is towards the left of the frame and this is kind of in the center why i did this is because i want the shoes to do a moonwalk and then the nike logo over here would appear and for the nike logo that would appear in the back of the shoes i will be adding that in the compositing part since we are rendering it out as a transparent and as for the moonwalk animation again i had to watch several tutorials on how to do a moonwalk which i have never done in my life but then after i watched several tutorials on youtube of how to do a moonwalk watched it in slow motion then i replicated it into animation if you want to get good at animation make sure you see references of how it's done in real life and try to recreate those details this is where i wanted to reveal the logo see as you can see the right shoe will move down and I imagine it in, in my head actually that this is where the logo would reveal. Initially in the final shot I had several mini shots like the skateboarding, a basketball shot where I would show a basketball court environment and the shoes would jump, and a basketball would drop down. Yeah, I had to remove that because of the deadline was approaching real quick. and as for the moonwalk shot that was actually my mom's idea as she told me that why don't you make the shoes dance a little bit or like a moonwalk and that's when it clicked in my head that why don't i make them do a moonwalk while the nike logo reveals itself in the end and that's what i did so as you can see over here it does a moonwalk and the shoes just go out of the frame leaving us with this frame with the floor and here we can add our nike logo in compositing later after you have completed your animation make sure you have selected the right camera in the scene properties over here like in this case the moonwalk and then select the frame start and end and then press on render and then press on render animation over here make sure to select the folder option beforehand what i did here is create a individual folder for every shot as you can see over here in shot 2 you can see all the frames that i rendered out i guess this sums up all the animation part that we did in blender okay so i did a omka over here i forgot to mention that the blender file for this animation is available on my gumroad page i will make sure to link this page in the description below after clicking on the link below it will take you to this gumroad page all you have to do is enter zero over here and then press on i want this enter your email address and then press on get then your purchase is successful and then you can download the blend file if i did make any mistakes or i left anything out please do let me know in the comment section below if we combine all these shots together this is what the video looks like
It looks good, but we can make this even much better in compositing. And for that, you can watch the part 2 video on compositing where I will be using DaVinci Resolve free version and I will walk you through the process of my editing and how I choose sound effects and music for the video. You can watch the part 2 video over here.